So let's look at public key encryption. So the two main things we'll look at are some basics and then also we'll look at an example of public key which is RSA. So the two main applications that we have for public key are to prove the identity of something and also to perform a key exchange. So with proof of identity what happens is that Alice takes some data and then we'll encrypt that data with her private key. She sends that over to Bob. Bob then takes her public key and decrypts the data. And if the data matches what uh, Alice sent in some way, then she has proven her identity. It's also used in terms of key exchange. So in this case, what we have is that uh, Alice and we have a shared key. Bob has a shared key and Alice wants the same shared key. So Alice sends over her public key. Bob then encrypts the shared key, the symmetric key, with her public key and sends it back. Alice then takes her private key and then decrypts it and then both Bob and Alice will have the same key. It's possible for us also to use it in terms of encryption where uh, Alice could send over her public key to encrypt some data and then she would use a private key to decrypt it. But unfortunately that's fairly processor intensive. So what we normally do is to use symmetric key encryption to do the main processing of the encryption. So typically we would use a shared key to perform that. So the three main methods that we can use to uh, for public key encryption are integer factorization. That's where we take two prime numbers and multiply them together. And the difficulty here is to be able to uh, factor them back again. So the main method we use here is RSA. We can use discrete logarithms. So the difficulty is to be able to find the value of x, even though we know g and p to give a resulting value of y. And the final method is elliptic curves. And this is used in things like Tor networking. Uh, a lot of IoT devices now use elliptic curve because it tends to use less processing power than RSA and also much less memory. But the method we'll look at here is the RSA method. So with RSA, the difficulty is that uh, we take two, two values and we multiply them together. And it's actually quite difficult. Once we have the values, if these are large values, large prime numbers, it's difficult to actually reverse them back to find the original prime numbers. And the method itself was created by uh, Rivest, Shamir and Alderman who created the RSA algorithm for public key. So the method itself starts off when we have two prime numbers P and Q. We then calculate N, so N is equal to P times Q. After that, we calculate what's called phi. Phi is equal to p minus 1 times q minus 1. So in this case, if it's 3 and 11, we get n is 33 and phi is 20. What we've got to now find is a value of e, the encryption key, to not have any shared factors with phi. So because of the factors of phi, 5, 20, or 2, 4, 5, and so on. We can't pick those values. So we could pick 3, or 7, and so on. So let's pick the value of 3. So the value of E is 3. So our encryption key becomes the E and the N, which is 3 and 33. Now we must make sure that this equation becomes true. E times D mod of phi equals 1. So as we have 3 here, 
and we try values of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 works. 7 times 3 is 21, mod 20, which is 1. So our decryption key is 7. So our, the key that we have is a 7 and 33. Okay, so we distribute the value of n and we also distribute the value of e, but we keep this value secret. Okay, so there are, there are our two keys, our encryption key and our decryption key. So we use an ex, ex, exponential cipher. So uh, we take our message, raise it to the power of e, take mod n. And for the decryption, decryption, we take the cipher to the power of d, mod m. So let's take a value of message of 5, 5 to the power of 3, mod 33, should give us 26. We now take 26, raise it to the power of 7, and we take mod of 33, it gives us 5. So the values match. So it should work. So let's now take an example here. Okay, so there's the values that we've just seen uh, for 11 and 3. If we want, we can plug these values in. And we should get same values that we saw there. Now let's take an example here. So there's 13 and 11. So that gives us an N of 143 and a Phi of 120. So we've just got to make sure that there are no common factors between E and Phi. So 7 isn't a common factor, so we take that one. 7 times D mod 120 equals 1. So if we do the calculations, search, then 103 times 7 mod 120 gives us 1. So there's the encryption key and the decryption key. So if we try it with a value of 7, we take the message of 7 to the power of 7 mod 143, take the decoded value back again, and we get this, the same message back. So in terms of our, our keys, what they look like is this in hexadecimal. So this is a hexadecimal value. So this value here is 65,335, which is a, a common value for E. And there's the prime number here that we're using. The decryption key is much bigger. And from there, but obviously we have this we have the same n value in there. Okay, so that's provided a, a basic introduction to public key encryption.